Hey, welcome back to RV Adventure TV. We got an update on the 2004 Chevy Duramax 6.6 .6 diesel truck that we used to pull our fifth wheel. As you've seen in previous episodes, she had wasn't feeling very well. She broke down. And now I'm going to give you the news of what it took to get this diesel fixed and back up on the road. Stay tuned. It's going to be interesting. as you can remember in previous episodes the truck was sitting about right here the tow truck is sitting right over here we got a tow to my mechanic he went and take a look at it uh, we got it in in two days and what the problem was was injectors uh, as you know with diesels the uh, the motor runs off of uh, diesel and not gas and it does not have spark plugs it's got injectors which atomize uh, the diesel fuel sprays it into the combustion chamber. I'm not going to get into specifics on that because probably I'm halfway wrong and a bunch of people will correct me. But anyway, let me show you what a uh, injector is. Hold on. All right, so right here, you've got four injectors on this side you've got four injectors on this side similar to your V8 on your gas burners but right here this is the injector right here right next to it is a harness that comes up for your firing sends a power current to make all this work so you can see right here hopefully there's a new pigtail put on here. What had happened is there's an issue with the 6.6 .6 turbo diesel that I didn't know about. And if you have one, you might want to look into this or you may have already had it done uh, or this condition already happened to you. So if it has, you know, uh, let me know, put it in the comments below if this has happened to you. But if it hasn't, more than likely it's going to. This unit has got 180,000 miles on it. She ran flawlessly for 10,000 miles. But what had come up um, as far as code wise when they took it into the shop was a P0207 injector 7 control. Okay, and it also came up with a, a P2146 injector position voltage control circuit group. That's what's going to come up with your codes when your check engine light comes on. And what happens here when one of these go bad? It's not like a spark plug on a diesel. It's just one doesn't work. It shuts down four of the eight cylinders to counterbalance. So it'll be either the forward one and the back one and the two in the middle on the other side. Or if it happens on the other side, it'll be the two outer ones and the two in the middle on this side. That helps balance everything out so you don't start tearing up your diesel. It doesn't get all out of time and everything. So anyway, diagnosed it, put new pigtails on it. Uh, which was probably the best case scenario. I didn't drive it. Uh, as soon as this happened, it kind of went into limp mode. First time it happened, uh, I was going down the interstate 70 miles an hour, check engine light come on, started running rough. Pulled off the exit, stopped at a gas station, turned it off, waited a few seconds, turned it back on, she ran fine, went down the road, did what I had to do. On the way back to the, my house, or the camper here, it started doing the same thing so I immediately uh, pulled off went down to my mechanic which was close by he ran the codes told me what it was or, or it said it was an injector issue so he said I'll try to get you in this was on a Thursday uh, he said he tried to get me on Monday so that's not bad so he got it in the shop got it fixed uh, the bill was uh, $331 so basically the part is a hundred bucks. It's going to cost you a hundred dollars to uh, do uh, get it uh, checked out on your computer, what the codes were and stuff. You can do it yourself. You can buy one of those, but if something goes wrong with the diesel. I'm not messing with it too much. 
So anyway, to make a long story short, got the truck back, went down the road, three days later, same thing happened. Now it was number two. So this is what happens on these that I can figure out by looking on the internet and talking to the mechanic. Usually number two and number seven go out because they're in the position that they're at. It's something about the wiring that they get abuse or they're in a bad uh, angle or something and that usually happens. So if it hasn't happened to you, more than likely it's going to. And if you're out in the middle of the road, uh, you may want to get this fixed. Uh, the parts usually 60 bucks. They charge me $89, which is fine. I'm happy. So anyway, uh, they got it fixed that day. I drove up to my mechanic. I was there at 6.30 because it happened on the way to work. Took it immediate layer. They weren't even open yet, but the guys were opening up the shop. They already pretty, pretty well figured knew what was going on. Had me one ordered and had me back on the road in an hour. So I was happy with that because I use this truck every day uh, for my work camp and work. So this is the diesel. Now, if you don't have a diesel mechanic, you're out on the road, this problem can be fixed by a gas uh, uh, mechanic. It's not anything to do with the diesel part of it, so it's really electronic. And if they put their uh, computer on here to find out what code it is, they should be able to fix that without a problem. So don't just think you have to take it to a diesel mechanic. When that happens, if you have a gas uh, uh, mechanic for something else, put it on there. He should be able to fix that, is what they tell me. So anyway, for a total of $203 for the first time, $331 for the second time, you know, that's roughly $540 for a diesel to get it fixed. Daryl's a happy camper. Uh, it could have been much worse. Just to let you know, things happen on the road. You're going to break down. You're going to have uh, maybe tire issues. You're going to have awning issues. You're going to have slide out issues. You're going to have issues. Don't get all negative. You go into a tizzy. and have a nervous breakdown or whatever it, it could be something simple of course it could be something bad just wait to find out then deal with it it's going to get fixed you're going to solve the problem just relax take it one day at a time one item at a time so anyway if you want to really get into this more on the duramax and learn more about it there's a website that i i saw it was bwd automotive he does a great video on the 2004 um, LLY uh, Chevrolet uh, 250 that's got the same motor in it goes into more detail of actually what happens so if you're a Duramax owner go into that video I'm not going to get into the details of it uh, but if you want to go to that video on YouTube and look it up you can watch that video but anyway we're happy so basically 540 bucks for the RV to get fixed cost us $120 for the uh, uh, rental car and of course we had good Sam's, didn't cost us anything for the um, uh, tow to the repair shop. So that was nice. Now, if it would have happened on the road, good Sam's would have had to tow this along with Maddie. Would have towed Maddie to our RV to the nearest campground. And we would have parked it there, then they would have towed this to the mechanic. So we're glad we had good Sam's. So remember that. Now, if you're in a class A and you have diesel problems and you live in yours full time, how fast do you think you can get a, uh, a class A diesel into a shop? If you own one now, just call anywhere. Right now, just call them and see how long it's gonna take you to get in it, just to get looked at to diagnose the problem. So when you're thinking about buying a class A or you're thinking about buying a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, think about what it's gonna cost if and when you break down, because you will break down. Uh, we got ours in and fixed in four days. I'm happy with that. If we were on the road, I can sit in an RV park for four road uh, four days. I'm in I'm in my RV. I'm living there full time. It's not that big a deal. But if I was in a Class A and I had to go to the shop and try to figure out a place to live, then you're talking motel. You don't have all your stuff. So I'm happy we had the fifth wheel. So that's just another thing to weigh the difference between a class A and a fifth wheel. So I hope this helps. I hope it helps you that when things happen on the road, you still try to stay positive. You, you, you take it as it comes one day at a time, you get it fixed and just be positive and also put back you some money because you're gonna need a reserve fund that when you break down. So anyway, Daryl with RV Adventure TV, we hope uh, 
you enjoyed this video uh, we want you to subscribe watch our new videos go back and look at the first video I did on this on the breakdown and uh, check out our other videos that we've done it's now 2017 we hope your uh, 2017 is going to be a great year please like and uh, comment down below if you've had one of these and it's happened to you let us know uh, and just give a comment or a thumbs up we appreciate it we enjoy doing this for you and we want to make sure that you stop the madness and start the adventure so we'll see you next time here at rv adventure tv have a great day